We just got back from our two weeks on the coast in the Montanita area and we made some interesting observations that we're going to share with you in this video about the culture, the climate, cost of living, critters, and conveniences. <laughs> we're going to talk about our observations of the Montanita coast and what it is like to live there compared to Salinas and Cuenca. Yeah, and this is specifically about the area between Montanita and La Entrada, including Mongrel Alto, which is just a little bit south of Montanita. Mm -hmm. It's about a 14 kilometer or 8.7 mile stretch of highway along the coast. Yes, and we're going to start with the cost of living, specifically with the cost of housing. Yes, yeah, since housing is usually the biggest expense everyone pays everywhere. Yes. So that's where we're going to start. We met with Deb Anderson. She's a real estate agent who lives in that area. She's from Minnesota. Hola, Deb. Hola. Deb spent quite a bit of time with us on two different occasions talking about housing, rentals, and buying houses in along the coast in that area. Mm -hmm. And she sent us a couple links. Right. And they're similar, very similar to what we're living in right now. And they were a little bit cheaper than we're paying now. We were surprised. Uh, Deb and our friend Rosie and some other people say we should expect to spend more in Montanita in that area than we do in Cuenca. But the links we saw, the properties we saw were less. But they were condos. Right. They weren't like freestanding houses. Although we're, ours is more of a townhouse. We butt up against the neighbor. And really nice condos. But really nice. One of them was a penthouse up on a hill overlooking the ocean. It was incredible yeah. it has it's i think two units and the so it was the upper level and there's a swimming pool with i just can't even describe the views and unfortunately i can't include the photos we don't have any of our own and i can't use other people's photos but it was uh 800 a month mm -hmm. for that place it was like 2,000 square feet three bedrooms three bath three full bath kitchen. full kitchen mm -hmm. quite a bit nicer than our house right now for 800 a month that included water and wi-fi the downside about that place is that it was up on a steep it was up on top of a hill and they said it takes about five minutes to walk down to the main road they didn't say like how long two hours to yeah walk up. they didn't say how long it takes to walk up to the place we'd have buns and legs of steel if we yeah were, we would there since we don't have a car <laughs> so that's in nunez too which is uh, just a little bit south of La Entrada. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of on the far end of that stretch, the far northern end. The so, other one, though, was in Alone, and that mm -hmm. was a couple blocks off the beach in a gated community. And yeah. it was also looked really nice. It was ground floor apartment, so that may have yeah. been why it was a little bit less expensive. But it had a yard. It did have a yard, which is great if you have a dog. Mm -hmm. And it also included water and uh, Wi-Fi. We've been told that nobody includes electricity unless it's short-term rental on the coast because of the cost of air conditioning and mm -hmm. that could get really out of control. Compared to our living conditions here in Cuenca, I think that that area, the alone area, is pretty similar mm -hmm. based on what we saw, but it's definitely not as expensive as Salinas. Salinas is going to be quite a bit more expensive if you want to be anywhere close to the ocean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we thought that our place in Salinas would be like twelve to 1500 mm -hmm. a month. And it looks like in a loan and that stretch of highway, it might be about the same. All right, next thing we want to talk about with food, the groceries and the dining out. Yeah, and the grocery shopping, the cost of everything was pretty similar except for coffee. Yeah, coffee was a lot more. A lot more with a lot less selection. Mm -hmm. So that was a little disappointing, but we persevered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and dining out, we felt like it was pretty similar to Cuenca we and did. a lot less than Salinas. Yes. You can get a mixed drink for like four fifty. dollars or five dollars. They were nine, like nine fifty, uh, along the Malecon and Salinas for the same, the same type of drink, like right. a margarita or a mojito. Yeah, and I think overall meals were less expensive than Salinas. There, mm -hmm. You can still find your cheaper almuerzos in e every city, mm -hmm. so they, you do have those options. But if you want to eat on the Malecon and Salinas, you're going to be paying a premium. Yeah, it's definitely a premium. Mm -hmm. Plus, there was a lot more food options, a variety of different types of foods, and. Salinas, it seemed like if you're into steak and seafood, you're golden. Yep, you'll be in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> because it's everywhere. And they, they have that in Montanita and mm -hmm. alone, but it's just, it's one of the options. They have Indian, Thai, um, they have vegan, vegetarian, it's just everything. Right. Pretty much they have hamburger joints, they have Pizza. sushi. I mean, we, there was everything and vegan sushi. We ate at this place, a Thai and, Thai and sushi place. It was really good. Right on the beach, they had all kinds of vegan options. That's the other thing, too, is that all the restaurants we went to had vegan and vegetarian options. And in Salinas, they didn't. Yeah, so for us, it was great, obviously. Mm -hmm. We yeah. like to eat out, in case you guys didn't know. Yeah, it's like our hobby. <laughs> <laughs> we like to get to know the staff and 
talk to him about everything. Plus, yes. we can get to practice our Spanish. Exactly. Yeah. We also wanted to talk about the cost of transportation. That's probably going to be a little bit higher there, or maybe actually quite a bit higher than Cuenca. Because Cuenca, we get pretty much anywhere in Cuenca for about two bucks alone in Montanita. It's it's cost a dollar fifty to take a taxi from Montanita to alone, but it costs five dollars to take a taxi from Montanita to La Entrada, and it kind of varies along along the way. So alone to La right. Entrada was four dollars. So it's quite a bit more for a taxi, and the buses kind of run intermittently and not on a real schedule. So you might see three buses stacked up and then you might not see another bus for 30 minutes. Right, so, so you have to factor time into mm -hmm. that. However, a bus ride's only 50 cents. Yeah, that's and a lot And the buses cheaper. are nice. Mm -hmm. One night we were heading home and we were waiting for the bus and we waited, what, 25 yeah, I minutes? Think so. About mm -hmm. 25 minutes for the bus and then it came and it stopped because there hadn't been a bus for 25 minutes. <laughs> And yep. so it stopped everywhere and was picking all kinds of people up. And it took us like another 25 minutes to get from Montanita back to La Entrada. So it was like a 50 minute ride, whereas a cab would have been about 12 minutes. If you're really industrious, you could walk, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, you could walk from Montanita to alone, but you're taking your life in your own hands. Yeah, because you have to walk on the highway. Now you can walk on the beach. The beach is so awesome. It's wide and flat. So you can walk all the way from alone all the way up to La Entrada, but mm -hmm. it will take you a couple hours. Yeah. But you'll be in great shape. Yeah, but you can't walk from alone to Montanita mm -hmm. on the beach. There's a big point that goes out into the ocean and it's the ocean crashes up against it. You can't walk around that yeah, way. Yeah, that would be very dangerous. So you have to walk on the highway to go around and it's just a narrow shoulder, about a shoulder's width, and it's a highway. So these buses and cars are and taxis are driving by at like 50, 60 miles an hour. And it's, I wouldn't, we didn't want it. We didn't it. do it. We thought about it briefly and then I'm like, I just yeah, don't feel no. safe on this. So we, we took a cab. Yeah. Also bottled water, just like mm -hmm. in Salinas, mm -hmm. you can't drink the water out of the tap. And a lot of people don't drink water out of the tap here in Cuenca. They do the big five gallon bottles of water. So that may not be an issue for you if, if you're used to that already, but that is an additional expense. It's two bucks a bottle and we go through what, two, two to three a week. Two to three a week. Yeah. The next thing I wanted to talk about are the conveniences or lack thereof <laughs> in Montanita and alone compared to Salinas and Cuenca. It's not nearly as well developed yet, but it has come a long way in the last several years. And we've noticed an improvement in the year and a half it's been it's since we've been there. Mm -hmm. There are a lot more Definitely. stores and uh, modern conveniences that they were lacking before. And one of them is a grocery store. They didn't they just had one tiny little grocery store when we were there last time. When we were there this time, they had two, and they're opening a Tia, which is more of a big um, grocery store. It's like a Mi Comisariato Junior, the one that we toured in Salinas. Mm -hmm. So we didn't get video of it because it didn't open until the day we were leaving. In yep. fact, it was open as we were on the bus leaving town. We're like, oh, it opened. I know. <laughs> so we didn't get video inside it. It nice. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, we did get video of the outside, and they were all working on it frantically. Like 100 people that day were working on that thing. Yeah, now we know why. Yeah, but they did get it open. So that that's going to kind of bring it up to a, a new level you know, as far as shopping goes. Right, but from what Deb and Marsha and Shell and other people told us, is that everybody makes a monthly trek to La Libertad or to Salinas and they mm -hmm. go and get all their shopping done and stock up on the, the basics like, mm -hmm. you know, laundry detergent and toilet paper and dog food and things that you can't get easily. Or specialty food items. Right, exactly. And you can um, take a taxi. I guess some of the people that live there do shared taxi rides or shared mm -hmm. drivers. They carpool. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and you can take a bus. Rosie told us that the bus takes um, cup, like an hour and a half for two hours and it costs two dollars so there's also no real hospitals there they do have some like clinics what we would call mm -hmm. urgent care clinics but if you want to go to a real doc like a real hospital with specialty doctors you, you need to go into guayaquil but a lot of people still come to cuenca for that they said it's a lot cheaper in cuenca than it is in guayaquil now we're going to talk about the climate and it's quite a bit different in montanita than it is in cuenca and even salinas which was really surprising to us Yes, the high season or summer starts at Christmas and runs through March or part of April, and mm -hmm. it is a lot warmer. Yeah, it's in the 80s and 90s that time of year. It's pretty humid. Mm -hmm. The winter months are really from like April, May through November, and it's really cloudy with some sunny days and the highs in the 60s and 70s. Yeah, and you'll get more rain as well. It, but we were really shocked at how much more humid it was there yeah. than both. Salinas is kind of a desert, so it was really dry. We, we weren't expecting it to be that dry on the ocean in Salinas. 
And in Cuenca, it's pretty dry because it's a high altitude right. city. And it's a lot drier than Montanita and alone in that area. It was so humid and you could see it in the distance. Things yeah. were kind of hazy. Yeah, if you look down the beach, it was like a white fog, like a white haze coming mm -hmm. off the water. Yeah. And all of that is loaded with salt. <laughs> So as you might imagine, your electronics are not going to last very long in that area. Yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. <laughs> yeah, everything from like coffee makers to computers will probably not last very long. We saw rust on pretty much everything mm -hmm. and it's a constant upkeep with paint and replacement. The altitude is an issue to consider if you're thinking about moving to Ecuador. You know, Cuenca is at almost 8,500 feet. And it's definitely, if you have health issues like arthritis, you're probably going to feel it more here than you do down in the warm, moist air along that stretch of the, of the coast. Do you have any more thoughts on that, Amelia? Not really. All right, let's talk about critters <laughs> next. Critters. <laughs> Lots of different critters there that we don't have here in Cuenca. Bugs being a big one. Yes, I was still scratching some bites around my ankles last night. Yep, here I have one right there on my arm. If, it's yeah. made scar. <laughs> so it's they have what we called in the dive community no CMs. What we called in Kansas in the summer were chiggers, and they're also called sand fleas, I think. And you don't see them; you just get the bug bites, and yep. they're itchy. <laughs> they are very itchy. Yeah, and there we saw grasshoppers and wasps. We don't really have a lot of bugs here in Cuenca. That's one of the nice things. Right, and there weren't as many bugs in Salinas either, but because it's dry. Yeah, I don't remember getting bit by anything. No, I don't either. I don't remember getting except maybe a couple of. We didn't even see a mosquito in Salinas, did we? I don't think so. We only saw a couple of mosquitoes while we were on the coast around La Entrada. Yeah, so it's definitely more buggy because it's more humid. Yeah, but with the bugs come birds. Yeah, the lots bird of variety. birds. Oh, there's so many birds in there so beautiful a lot of different colors different songs yep there's one that sounds like a squeaky toy he does sound like a squeaky <laughs> toy <laughs> Um, what else? Oh, iguanas. Oh, yeah, that giant iguana that I almost stepped on. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even see it blended right into the gravel. and we, It jumped right when we jumped. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some lizards and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw some lizards, geckos, of course. Mm -hmm. And then there was, I'm not sure what caused it, but the first week we were there, we saw a lot of Portuguese man of wars oh, yeah. that were dead on the beach. And those things can really hurt if they get, if their tentacles sting you. They're even worse than a jellyfish from what we've been told. So you got to be really careful of that. Definitely. They call them aguamalas, aguamalos in Spanish, but they're a Portuguese man of war and they're scary as hell. But Yeah, they look like a blue plastic water bottle. Yeah, so. I thought they looked like a blue empanada. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they look like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so watch out for those. Yeah. And then you also notice if you watched any of our other videos, and I'll put a link to our playlist for the La Entrada videos up there, you'll see a lot of dogs and cats in the mm -hmm. streets, and a lot of them have homes, but they just wander freely. It's, it's a totally different attitude about dogs and cats in Ecuador and especially along the coast than what we're used to as Americans. Right. So you're going to see a lot more of that. And some of them are not friendly. Most of the street dogs are very friendly because they know cute gets food. So they act like super cute. They roll over on their backs and, you know, they're wiggly. But some of the dogs that are guarding people's houses were not very friendly. So you got to be really careful. The culture on the coast is definitely more laid back than it is in Cuenca, which is also laid back. Yeah, we were surprised at how laid back it is. And we noticed that in Salinas, mm -hmm. too. It's, it's just even more tranquilo than Cuenca. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And there is a very active expat community. They all get together on Friday afternoons and play poker and hang out at a bar and alone. Mm -hmm. And then they all go somewhere for dinner. And that happens every Friday afternoon. And we wandered by one day just by accident. And there were a lot of expats there and everybody was seemed to be having a lot of fun a lot of laughing and yeah it was cool to see that yeah it was awesome it's also a great surfing area alone in montanita are known as the best surfing spots in ecuador so there are a lot of people from all over the world a lot of young people that come there to live and surf yeah it's really cool there's such a wide variety of people mm -hmm. definitely all ages as well um, people who are backpackers van lifers or just tourists like us mm -hmm. yeah it's a lot of bohemians yeah yeah it's really cool <laughs> it is it's yeah it's a neat place to to hang out and watch and people watch yes. <laughs> definitely but montanita is known as the party town so if you mm -hmm. want to go and party that is your spot if you do not you probably want to vacate yeah um, you know, once it gets dark. 
Yeah, because they stay up really late. It's really loud. Everybody's blasting music in the streets, dancing in the streets, and beach parties. Beach parties, yeah. Alone is much quieter, and again, as the further north you go to La Entrada, it gets quieter. Each each little pueblita is quieter. Right. Well, and lots of we met s several people that moved south to Mangro Alto, which is really difficult Mangro for me Alto. to say. <laughs> Mangro Alto, and it's going to be quieter there too. Cuenca is known as the Athens of Ecuador because there's a lot of culture, literature, arts music here. Salinas is known as the Miami of Ecuador mm -hmm. because it's got a lot of high-rise condos. It looks like a little Miami. It's so definitely more higher end. Yeah, I would say. higher end and more expensive. Mm -hmm. And the Montanita area is like the Bohemia of Ecuador. A lot of you know younger people, the surfer types, backpackers. So it's just really a lot different in just three different cities and areas. It's just so much different from a cultural perspective. Yeah, it's really cool. We mm -hmm. loved. We love every place we've been. Yeah, they're, they're all different, and they all have bad, good good things and bad things, depending on your perspective, really. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that's all we have for this video. And if you have any questions about our experiences there, please leave those in the comments below. Yep, we'll do our best to answer all the, your questions. Yeah, if you enjoyed it and you learned something, leave us a thumbs up. Yes, and please. as always, remember to subscribe and share it with your friends on social media. And we will see you all in our next video. Ciao. Ciao. Give it a chance to focus once I settle in. Love you. I love you too. Deep breath. Find my happy place. Kumbaya. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that in a long time. All right, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, let's go. <laughs>